All right. Uh, good morning, Stat 250 Fall Semester. Um, this is going to be a little welcome video, just kind of go over the layout of the class. Since we don't get to see each other face to face, um, I like to do something like this to kind of allow you to hear the process, kind of see, uh, you know, what was going on when I was creating the class, and uh, it's just overall layout. Please still feel free if you want to give me a call this weekend to talk because um, you're unsure about something or a certain the way a certain thing's going to run, um, or send me an email or post something on the discussion board underneath the questions there, and that way I can give a response to everybody that might have a similar question. Um, and I'll kind of touch on that just real quickly. So let's see if I can do this in 15 minutes. That way you guys can be on your way. All right. So. Um, announcements. There are several announcements that are on the announcement page and what I want you to do to start off is just please make sure that you take a minute to read through all of them. So if you scan down through there you see um, methods of communication, uh, grade book, uh, Axiom software. Um, I'm not sure if we're going to use this this semester or not but at least it's in place this email and so that way if you do see it just make sure you're aware of how to handle Axiom and the main thing is is don't back out check behind yourself when you take a quiz or a test this is so important that you take a minute and go back and look at the quiz or test and make sure that you are given the proper points or credit for the your answer um, if you misspell a word or you put the punctuation in the wrong place in a, in a, a fill in the blank question um, that could definitely cause you to lose the points but it doesn't mean that I won't give you the points it just means that the system didn't recognize your answer so you just send me an email it says, hey, on quiz 3.1, number 14, could you take a look? I think I should have gotten credit. And that will kind of help us get through the process. All right. Calculator. In the past, um, you've had a required calculator, the TI-83 or TI-84. Um, I've decided that there are several websites out there that we can accomplish the same things um, and since many of you are professionals and the reality of using a calculator like this every day uh, probably don't really exist uh, I think using resources like the internet would probably be a better choice so um, if you have a calculator already you're welcome to go ahead and use it I'll still keep my tutorial videos up so that way when we're doing a certain topic you'll have the option of learning how to do it with the calculator or you have the option of learning how to do it with a website if you have any questions about that just contact me quizzes and tests um, so this is the biggest thing you'll have two hours to take a quiz and a test um, those quizzes and those tests are open book because you know obviously you're sitting there by yourself um, at your computer uh, and you have one attempt okay on the quizzes as soon as you're done I will show you the answers the actual correct answers will come up on the test I do not give you the correct answers you're required to go back in and look up and see if you can figure out what you did wrong on those quizzes or on excuse me on that test and then you can email me and we'll discuss the answer and so forth if you'd like but just keep in mind I don't I don't give the answers just directly right after a test however on the quizzes I do I still encourage everybody and I'll talk about this in a minute to make sure you look over your quiz and check your answers because that's part of the learning process all right one last thing when a quiz or test opens it will be open for seven days and when we look at the course pacing chart we'll see what that means okay so let's just go ahead and go to the course co course pacing chart real quick well, actually excuse me yeah let's take care of the course pacing chart right now all right. so here we are um, this is the course pacing chart. This is what it looks like. Um, I just posted it just this morning. So go ahead and take a minute to get to that in the syllabus tab and print it out. This is like your calendar. Um, if you're if you're a, a handheld device person, you know you've got a smartphone. Um, you might want to put these dates in your calendar. Um, you know, otherwise, I'd say hang this on the refrigerator, hang it on your bathroom mirror. This tells you when things open. This keeps you on track. That's why it's called our co approximate course pacing chart. Of course, I put the word approximate in there in case we have to make any changes um, to the schedule. So just keep that in mind. Um, so as you go through here, let's just talk about the first quiz. The first quiz opens on Monday. So you have until Monday at a minimum to work on the suggested homework over chapter one uh, to kind of prepare yourself for the quiz but then after Monday you still have seven days to take the quiz so the, the window of opportunity to, to take 
quizzes is, is very large. Um, you know, so you see there it's it's basically seven days, and the the layout that I have for the course is every Monday and every Thursday something opens. So every Monday something's opening and something's closing. Every Thursday something's opening and something's closing. And you can see what I'm saying here is is that you know your first your your first quiz opens on the 19th, it closes on the 26th. And on the 26th, quiz 2.2 .2 opens up. And then it closes on the 3rd, and then on the 3rd another quiz opens. And it's actually a chapter test. So you kind of get an idea that it's this pattern. All right, along the way, in your um, the, it's actually just in the first couple chapters right now. I haven't really added thing to, anything to the last couple chapters. And I may this semester, I'm going to go ahead and open that liberty. I may put in a couple more assignments down here in chapter 8 or chapter 10. Um, if I do, I'll make sure I make an email announcement. I'll post it onto the, the announcement page and send an email out. Soft chalk is an is a, a web based um, place where we can submit assignments. This the soft chalk assignments will be found in the homework folder. So if you're looking for the soft chalk assignments when you get here to the one over section 2.3, you'll look inside the suggested homework folder for chapter one or for test number one. Um, and just it's a link. You click on it. It's not there right now. I have to still upload it and get it ready to go, but it's just something that you go, you click on it, it opens up, you can use your book to answer the questions, it's just got some basic questions, it allows me to kind of get some feedback of how you're thinking. It also gives you instant feedback, so then you know if you did it right or wrong um, for the next quiz. Alright, then we got Labor Day, we're closed, you know, so I didn't assign anything that day, I just pushed it back a day. All right. Um, we also have an email assignment where you're going to get complete something with Microsoft Excel. If you don't have Microsoft Excel, just contact me. I'm sure we can figure something out besides that. All right. So, any questions on this? Talk to me. Ask me. Okay. Um, down here at the bottom. Okay. The final exam. The final exam is cumulative. It's over all six tests. Um, our final exam. Um, is going to be our biggest final, biggest test. It's worth 20% of our grade. So we're going to do this underneath Proctor U. Okay, so with Proctor U, that's that new feature that Thomas University is trying out this semester, or using this semester, excuse me. And you will need to schedule your an appointment with Proctor U. And I'll touch on that when I get to the syllabus. But you have three days. You have a three-day window to schedule that test to be able to complete it. So you find a good time in your schedule to get that test completed. All right. Questions or concerns about the course pacing chart, just please contact me. All right, let's jump into the syllabus. This is pretty self-explanatory. Um, you got my contact information. Um, the virtual office is if you want to meet like in Illuminate and kind of have a session. Um, my recommended method for questions is that you just e send me an email um, and let me know like say hey you know on suggested homework 2.2 .2, I don't understand homework problem 15 so what I'll do is I'll make a video working the problem and explaining it just like if you came to my classroom and, and we're sitting in my classroom or my office and we're working out the problem together I'll record a video of me working that problem so that way you can kind of see what to do you can see the steps and see the whole process I'll post that video up on YouTube I'll send you the link and then that way you can watch that video as many times you can hit pause as much as you want and so forth so that's my preferred method um, because I can do that whenever my schedule is available and then you can watch it whenever your schedule is available um, versus meeting the illuminate that requires both of us to find a good time where our schedules meet and I know many of you are uh, professionals that you know this is your you're going back to school you're not a, a first generation or a, a traditional student all right method of instruction okay so this is the layout of the course and when I get into um, inside of the course I'll kind of explain this a little bit more but basically you're gonna use eProfessor video lectures and YouTube videos to help guide you through the lessons that's like if you came to class and sat there and watched me teach you're gonna use those to guide you to learn the information then you're gonna try some suggested homework problems if you have any problems over the suggested homework problems you can email me and I'll give you feedback like I just mentioned then once you think you're ready you'll take the quiz after the quiz you'll go back through 
if you got anything wrong you want to go back and see if you can figure out what you did wrong if you can't figure out what you did wrong then you email me those numbers in the quiz name and the numbers and I will provide you feedback whether it be in typed form if it's a, a, a basic question or an email form or I'm sorry in a um, video form so that way you can go back and you can study what you got wrong over that section and you'll complete that process for every section until you get to a chapter test when you get to that chapter test then what I'll do is I'll go through and and you you'll take that test having prepared from the quizzes you'll take that test and that'll be your final measurement of whether or not you learn that content from that section or from that that chapter or, or a combination of chapters so that's kind of the layout of the class All right. Got some policy stuff there. The eighth edition. If you have a different edition of the book, it'll work just fine. What I need you to do is just realize that you're going to go by section number. So when I called, pulled the pacing chart, this says section 2.2. So you won't look for page numbers when you're looking in the suggested homework. You just look for section 2.2. Require materials. Of course, you need a computer. You need internet. Um, you need some kind of speaker or headphones. Um, this headphones are not required. Um, the speakers to be able to listen to video and hear sound they are required. Microphone and headset not required um, unless you are just dying to have some illuminate sessions. Okay. However, you will need a webcam for Proctor U. Okay. So keep that in mind. Calculator not required but it is if you'd like to get use one you can and I have the information listed right here once again for if you want to try to rent a calculator you can check it out at rentcalculators.org let me know if that discount code is ex discount code has expired and I'll get us another one software so if you try to load something and you're running in blackboard and it's not loading um, you can obviously send me an email and let me know and I'll give you these links but you need to make sure you have an updated Adobe Reaver Adobe Reader updated Adobe Flash Player and updated Adobe Shockwave Player. Okay, those are three things that will be playing that you'll need and you might even need QuickTime and so um, but just keep that in mind. Alright don't forget that the Student Support Services um, they're located in the contact tab so if you want to find their contact information you can look there on Blackboard in the contact tab um, and see if they can provide any services for you. Okay, We got some learning outcomes Homework. Homework will not be submitted. Okay, suggested homework is for you to practice. The only thing that you will submit to me at this moment is the course pacing chart. So right there is a checklist of what you will submit. And what I highly recommend to you is is that when you finish quiz chapter one quiz, you write your grade down next to it. So you know you're done. You know what your grade was. When you finish quiz number two point one you write down your grade so you know that you've completed it it's a check sheet it's showing you this is what you have to complete by the end of the semester to be able to have a complete grade and not have any missing assignments if anything else pops up like I said that if I adjust or I add something then I'll make sure you know well ahead of time I'll make sure that you have plenty of time to complete it the deadline will be completely clear okay there'll be no surprises I'm sorry wrong one Okay, so we talked about quizzes. I told you they'll be open for seven days. Um, you'll have one attempt. Um, you want to make sure that you use the quiz to prepare for the test. Late penalties may apply. So if you don't complete that te that quiz within seven days, you could have a 10% late fee apply to that. Assignments, I skipped that. Assignments are those, the email assignments, the soft chalk assignments, and then, like I said, anything else that I might um, slide in there as an additional assignment as the semester goes on. Tests, same thing, seven days. This is your final measurement. This is the final measurement of whether or not you understand the things that we learned in the quizzes and in the suggested homework. Final exam, um, once again, you've got that window. It's cumulative. Um, you'll talk more about it as we go. Okay. Oops, I just see something I didn't change in my syllabus right there. So that's old information right there. I apologize. Oh, no, it is, it's just not updated all the way. Um, our final exam will open on December 2nd and close on December 5th. Sorry for miscommunication there. Okay, Proctor U. You've got emails about this. Um, you know, these are the basic facts. I'm just going to say here's the basic facts. Uh, you know, you have two hours for the assessment. That's the final exam. Um, you know, it's you need to be prepared for that. It is going to be open book for me. 
Uh, let's see what else. Um, you know, the most important thing is is to look at those emails from Mrs. Dennis about. I mean, she's gonna have these same details listed, but Miss Dennis has the details listed. This will be for us on our final exam. You will need to set up your Proctor U appointment for your final exam. Okay. If you have any questions, if I can assist you with this before, if you're, you have any anxiety, and of course, leading up to the final exam, I will provide more information, more details, and we'll make sure that you feel comfortable with the process. Okay. I just went to 15 minutes, so I'm going to keep moving quickly, but not too quickly, so that things make sense. Makeup exam policy. Um, you know, just communicate with me, uh, guys. I can't stress, guys and guys, I can't stress enough with you. Um, I understand that you are a prof most of you are a professional. You already have a job. You're going back to school to extend your career, to um, give you that pay boost. You know, whatever the goal is. And some of you might be, you know, for or, uh, a traditional student. But what I need is communication. I don't need for you to disappear for three weeks and then come back and say, oh, can I make this work up? And then all of a sudden expect to get full credit on that those missing assignments. The flip of that would be is if you know you, know you have a busy work week and you know you're going to have a hard time getting caught up, you send me an email sometime during that week and say, hey, I may be late on quiz 2.1 um, because I have a very busy week um, with work. That right there is communicating. That's communication with me. That's letting me know ahead of time. So before you get to the quiz, before the quiz is due, you've already communicated that you might be late, or you're going out of town for business for a week, and you know, and you're going to be busy with stuff. You know, what I mean, communication is what I need. Okay, don't disappear for three weeks and then come back and say, okay, I want to make these up, and not expect to have a late penalty. Okay, that's my number one thing. If you have any questions, please contact me. I'll, I'll help clear that up with you. We can talk on the phone, like I said. Honor code. Um, you know, make sure you see the TU honor code. The main thing is, folks, if you have people helping you take your quizzes and your tests, you are not following the honor code. That is why they put Proctor U in place. Is be so that way we know that if Sally is supposed to be taking this class, it's Sally that that is filling in the answers. It's Sally's knowledge that's completing the quizzes and the tests. So if you have someone helping you, if you are copying it, the answers down from somebody else, you are breaking the honor code, and you are not doing what you're supposed to be doing with the class. Forum policy. Please take a look at the opening activities. We have the discussion board etiquette. Guys I, and gals, I really don't use the discussion board very much besides a place for you guys to put um, a, you know, opening activities and to put some general questions. Um, you know, I think as a math class, we can kind of serve this better by just kind of you know doing your problems, working your stuff out. There, at times, there might be some stuff we could do with discussion, but I haven't implemented that yet. So if you have questions, for me, regarding a homework problem, regarding a test problem, regarding a quiz pro quiz problem, don't put, post on the discussion board because I won't see it there as quickly. Post those questions to me on an email or give me a call or whatever, and that way I'll know that you're, you have a question. All right, we've got six chapter tests. Those are the topics that we'll be covering. Tests will account for 60% of your grade. Um, quizzes will account for quizzes and other assignments will account for 20% and then your final exam is 20% of your grade. Okay, so that's the breakdown. Basically what that means for you is that means that every quiz is about 1% of your grade. And that means that every test is about 10% of your grade. So you can screw up on a quiz, but I would highly suggest if you're looking to have a B or an A in this class, don't screw up on the test. Make sure that you've reviewed what's on those quizzes before you open a test. Late assignments, 10% 10, 10 penalty. Okay, so 10% off the, the grade. So you make a B on that quiz, it's down to a C. You make a C, it's down to a D. Okay, and, and, and you'll notice there that I basically say a late penalty may apply. Okay, I give you a couple freebies, but if it becomes a habitual, then that's when I apply the late fee at the end of the class. Okay, incomplete. If that happens, we'll come to that at that time. Grades, you guys can read that. And then some general outcome, um, matrix alignment, and so forth. And then a little bit more about the the um, final exam, just listed one more time. Okay, let's get into Blackboard real quickly and see if we can get out of here. 
All right, so here we are in our Blackboard environment. Every online class, hybrid class, should have the same tabs going on the left-hand side for the first few. Um, I have also added a few more on there, so that way you've got some more options of places that you can go and look. Um, so let's see, we've got announcements. We're on that page, um, syllabus page. So uh, TU has a general part two uh, syllabus policy. That's the same thing you're going to see for every class. Take a look at that. Here's our syllabus that I just looked at. There's no need for you to print that off. It will be right here the whole semester. Okay, um, So no need to print it off and waste paper. It's going to be right there. Course pacing chart. You do need to print this off. This is your Bible for this class. These are the assignments that must be completed by the end of the semester. This is your checklist. Okay? Remember, like I said, write your grades down next to it, next to the assignment once you're done. That way you know you're done, you remember what you made on it, you got a record right there. Content. Content is where you go when I say um, to go look for an e-professor video or to go look for a, a, a video lecture. This is the place that you go. So let's take a look at chapter three. So in chapter three, um, when you're doing section uh, one, you're going to go in here and, and you can see here these are different videos that are provided by the textbook company and that I use in my instruction. So you'll click on it okay, and it says follow this link. And we're not going to watch the video. I'm just going to let it pop up for a second. I just want you to see the, what it looks like, what it, how it goes. Okay, now, right here, you remember I was telling you that there are certain softwares that you're going to need. If one of these videos will not load, then what you need to do is click on either one of these links right here because you're missing either a flash or a shockwave player. So you want to make sure you download those latest versions if you're having any troubles playing these. So they've got those on both of their videos um, types. They've got those little update links right there for you to use. Okay, so that's if I ref if I refer to and say, oh, go you know watch E Professor video section 3.1. You know that's what I'm talking about. Okay, those are the videos that you'll reference. Those are in the content tab. Discussion board. So what you can see here is some people have completed their intro forum. I've got 23 total posts. Some people have completed their reflection po um, forum. They've got 18 posts. When I was talking about um, general questions, so if you ask there's some general questions that you might want to ask about something, you're welcome to go ahead and post it. I'll keep an eye on that, you know, and kind of see, you know, someone's got a, a post here that they've they've done um, that I keep from previous semesters because people, you know, common questions. Um, and then I also have some questions about the syllabus or the course pacing chart. So that way, if they're just a generic question that people, everyone might have, then I have one place where you can come and reference them. Number, we're, we're generally not going to post questions about suggested homework, quizzes, or tests on here. I would rather take care of those personally through email. Um, so that way, I make sure that I see your, your uh, question as soon as possible. Test quizzes and assignments. This is the magic key. This is the button that should, that takes you to all of your stuff that's coming up. Okay, so opening activities. That was your one of your first things. Hopefully, some of you have started on that. I've, saw, I've seen that some things have come in and people have done their reflection. So these are just opening activities. I'm asking you to have done by actually by today at 11:59 by midnight. Discussion board etiquette, um, syllabus, and course pacing chart. Okay, let's go back to that tab. Okay, and then this is where what you'll see is, so here's topic number one, suggested homework and assessments. So you click in there, and what you'll see is, I have the suggested homework available for all the sections right now. But what you don't see is the quiz, because the quiz for chapter one doesn't come available until Monday. So you have until Monday to be working on the suggested homework, getting the problems, getting familiar, preparing for your quiz. And then on Monday, that quiz will come available, and it'll pop up right here inside of, of this folder, and you'll click on that quiz, and you'll be ready to roll. Okay. Remember, you have one attempt. Once you open that quiz, you have one sitting. So you can't close it and come back to it. So it's not an unlimited amount of time. So it's not just two hours that will pause every time you need a break. So once you open it, you're rolling. Okay. Um, if you have connection issues, send me an email, send me a text message. I'll see if I can get to the computer real quickly and, and get it open back up for you so that way you can still take care of it. I know, like, for example, for me, you know, finding time to record this video, I needed to find 30 to 40 minutes at one moment to, to take care of it. So that means when you're taking a quiz, you're going to need to find an hour to two 
to sit down and take the quiz and if it kicks you out and I'm not available to reopen it I know that creates an issue I'm aware of that I will do my very very best to get that open back up for you but obviously um, you know I can't I can't do anything with blackboard on a mobile device as of now so it's not like I can take care of it from my phone so I have to be at the house I have to be able to get to a computer to be able to do it so I will do my best okay I promise so and as the semester goes on the other folders will come available they'll just pop up right below here in order contacts so here's your contact information um, for different things resources at TU okay so take a look in there and see if you anything you might need looks like some of the stuff's listed twice sorry about that but that way you make sure you get to see it right okay my grades is where you go to look at your grade for my class um, I'm going to show you on the grade. I have an announcement that talks about how you tell what your grade is. I'm going to show you on what my grade book looks like, where it shows all everybody. But what I want you guys to keep in mind is, is that my grades works the same way. Um, if you want to go and open up a quiz that you already took and take a look at it, you go inside my grades, you find the quiz you want to look at, you click on the link, it'll pop the quiz back up, and you can review and figure out what you did right or what you did wrong. Okay, so this is what it looks like for me, and so I can kind of reference and explain to you what I'm talking about with your grade. So um, just disregard the names there. They're going to stay there. Okay, so we've got uh, two columns right here that we need to pay attention to. We've got a column that says grade including missing. So what that means is that is your grade for every assignment this semester all at once. That means that if you haven't completed an assignment it has a zero for it in the grade book so that grades gonna be low the entire semester it's gonna be you know if you start out it's gonna be like a seven percent it's gonna be an, a ten percent it's gonna be eleven percent okay the grade the next column and now it's a column for me but for you it's listed in your my grades the other one says grade for completed work that is your average for what you've completed so far this semester so that means that if you stop the class right then, that would not be your grade. That is the grade for what you've completed. The grade including missing is your grade at that moment. So if you stopped doing any work for the class and just said, I'm done, I'm not going to take any more tests, I'm not going to take any more quizzes, that would be the grade that you would get for the class. So what will happen is, as you get to the end of the semester, these two columns should be exactly the same grade because they are, you've now completed all of your missing work and you have a grade for the completed work. So those grades should be exactly the same. So don't get in a panic when you look down there and you're like, oh my god, I have a 25%. No, you don't. You have a 25% including all the things that you haven't completed yet. Your real grade for what you've done is the grade for completed. Okay, so that's your average of the things that you've done. All right. So that takes us through the course, um, kind of the basic layout, the basic structure. Uh, you know, like I said, one more time, so you hear it. You do the suggested homework. You don't submit it. You don't do anything with it. Um, if you have any questions, you email me. Once you get your questions answered from the suggested homework, you take the quiz. Once you've completed the quiz then you see if you have any questions if you feel good about everything on the quiz then you go on and complete the next suggested homework and go on and complete the next suggested quiz and you keep doing that process until you get to a test do not open a test until you feel comfortable with all of the quizzes once you feel comfortable with all the quizzes take that test remember the t quizzes are worth about one percent of your grade the tests are worth about twenty so if you, I promise you, if you, if you feel good about those quizzes, you will be ready to go on that test. All right. So that's Stat 250. I went 15 minutes longer than I said I was going to do. I'm at 29 minutes right now. So um, I appreciate everybody. Please, if you need to hear my voice and you want to talk on the phone this weekend or anytime, please give me a call. Send me an email and, and give me your your number and say give me a call, please, when you get a chance. I'll give you a call. We can talk and we can ease any anxieties you have. Answer any questions. All right. Welcome to SAT 250. It's going to be a great semester. Um, I appreciate everyone's hard work and the sacrifices that you're going to make over this semester.